problems we've got in the opener today, just reviewing what we did last week. So we've got uh, a couple of things here that the price is changing by some percentage. Uh, first one, we want to buy a DVD, maybe a movie uh, that costs $12, but we also have to pay tax. We want to figure out what that final price is going to be. So what are we going to do first? Start at 100%. So we're going to start at 100%. That would be, uh, 100% would be if we put, pay regular price. So 100% would be $12. But we're not going to pay 100%. What are we going to do? How's that going to change? Add. We're going to add that 8.5%, right? So the tax is going to increase the price by 8.5%. So we start at the regular price, which is 100% at 8.5%. And we get... 108.5%. 108 it is really important for these three numbers that you have that percent symbol on there because these are all percents, and percent means out of 100. All right, 108.5 is different from 108.5%. All right, now what do I do with that percent? Yeah, we're going to change the percent to a decimal. A decimal is easier to work with, so we divide it by 100 or move the decimal point two places to the left, and we get what? 1.085. And what's this number here called? It, it's a multiplier. So we're, what we're paying is 108.5% of the original price of the, of the DVD. So we can multiply it by this decimal here to get our final price. Um, so what's that going to look like when we do that? What are we multiplying that 1.085 by? 12. 12, right? So we start with $12, and we should have a dollar sign on this. Multiply it by that multiplier, 1.085. Should I have a percent on this? No. No, it's not a percent. It's a decimal, right? Uh, we multiply those together, and we get some number. What's the number that the calculator gives us here? 13 point what? Exactly? Yes. All right, so since it's exactly 13.02, do we need to worry about rounding or adding zeros to make it make sense with money? No, we're, we're good with that. So remember, when we're dealing with money, we always want dollars and cents. So there should always be two numbers after the decimal point. Uh, what else do I need here, though? Sign. We need the dollar sign. Show that it's money. So for that $12 DVD, we're actually going to end up paying $13.02 with the tax added in there. Uh, next one, we're going to buy a DVD player. Maybe we need the DVD player so we can watch the DVD. Uh, normally costs $119, but it's on sale for 30% off but we're also going to have to pay that 8.5% tax. So how do I figure out what I end up paying in total for the DVD player? All right, so we're going to start at 100%, just like we did last time, and do what? We're going to subtract 30%. So what we're doing right now is we're finding the multiplier for that 30% discount. So 100% minus 30% gives us... 70%. Now, we're not going to multiply the 119 times 70. Uh, we're going to multiply it by 70%. And to make that easier, let's just make that percent a decimal, which is 0 0.7. All right, so we get a multiplier here, and that multiplier is for the 30% discount. We also need to find a multiplier for what, though? The 8.5% tax, right? So how do we do that? Do we start with the 70% and just add on the 8.5? No. no. Okay, we have to go back to 100%. We have to start at 100% again. And with the tax, we're not going to subtract because tax is increasing. Um, so we add 8.5%. And actually, all of this work here is going to be the same as this line right here, right? Okay. So 100% plus 8.5% gives us 108.5%. We change that to a decimal. Get 1.085. That is not right. 1.085. And we get the multiplier for the tax. So notice that since the tax is the same, the multiplier for the tax is the same also. It's the same multiplier. So we probably could have gotten away without doing all this work since we already knew the multiplier for 8.5% tax. Um, now what? All right, so we're going to take that original price, $119, and we multiply it by each of those multipliers, by 0 0.7 and by 
And this one, we're not going to get a nice pretty number, are we? No. What do we get for this from the calculator? I need one person to tell me. 90 point... Alejandro, go ahead. Like that? Yeah. All right, so what this is, this is $90 here, but the cents are all kind of messed up, right? So which, which number in this do we actually want to round? Where do we want to stop? We want, we want that zero in there? No. We're going to stop at the eight, right? So dollars and cents, cents we're going to use two decimal places, which means we're just going to cross everything else off. Now, I have to be careful, though. I can't just cross it off without thinking about what's going to happen with this 8 here. Is this 8 going to stay an 8, or is it going to go up to a 9? Okay. Uh, why? Is it because it's an 8? So we look at the next number. We look at that 0, and that 0 tells us that that 8 is going to stay the same. So if it's... 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, so less than 5, it's going to stay the same. If it's 5 or more, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, then it's going to go up to the next number. We don't have to do that here, though, because it's 0. Um, I am missing something, though. It's going to be $90.38, so how do I show that? We need that dollar sign there. So we get $90.38, and you can just go ahead and box your answer there. You can rewrite it off to the side. If you had to change that 8 to a 9, if it got rounded up, we should probably rewrite it so it's not all messy there.